How do you make concrete garden art, concrete statues? Well, I've got this really heavy, really heavy uh, raccoon, and I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's some hens back there, some tortoises. I've got some different statues around the yard that I use to kind of um, add some, kind of some extra little highlights, just some fun in the yard. Uh, they're great for gifts, they're great for uh, even a little bit of a profitable side thing to kind of earn some extra money and uh, they're just fun to have. So today's video is gonna be all about how to make these things. It's actually part three of a three-part series. Part one and two is more of how to make the mold, uh, how to duplicate a statue, that sort of thing. And uh, today's video is really on how to actually pour the concrete, demold it, and get it out here into the yard. So check out today's video. Hopefully this will be helpful. It's kind of interesting to watch. Most people don't realize how these things are made. So enjoy and let me know if you've got any questions in the comments. All right, so we've got the latex rubber mold ready to go. We've got the fiberglass shell ready to go. It is time to do the fun part, to make the actual statues. So before we even pour the concrete in there, there's just a couple little preparation things that I do. Uh, there's a mold release that is great with the latex rubber, uh, denatured alcohol, and castor oil. And it's basically uh, 10 to one. So 10 parts of the denatured alcohol to one part of the castor oil. Put that in a spray bottle, shake it up, and uh, you're just going to kind of mist that in there, um, swirl it around in the statue uh, or in the mold, kind of get it all there. And then I turn it upside down just to get any drips that go out before it's time to pour. So um, I just did that a moment ago. I went and sprayed all of these, got them all uh, um, wet, and they're already most of the way dry. And so I can go and flip these around and have them ready for concrete. So these are ready. The last thing I like to do is I like to have some little strips of wire that I'll, oftentimes I'll just bend them over so they're kind of double thick. And um, I'll take these wires as I'm pouring the concrete and some of those more breakable parts, whether it's a leg, whether it's an ear, uh, some little, some thinner parts. I'll try to put a little wire in there so uh, with the concrete it adds some strength and oftentimes it will save a leg or an ear or something from falling off when there's an accident, something gets dropped. Uh, it can make a big difference. It still might crack, but at least that thing is on there and you can um, kind of make it look better without having to have a missing leg or missing rabbit ear or whatever else. So I've got those things ready to go. Uh, it's time to go mix the concrete and pour it on in.
All right, and 48 hours later, the statues are up here. They are uh, hardened up, they're still kind of breakable, but I think they're at the spot where I can go ahead and take the shell apart, uh, take the mold off carefully, and hopefully not break any limbs or ears or other uh, features off the statue. So let's take a look at how, uh, how they come apart. I'm gonna take off the bolts. All right, so the bolts are out. I don't know if you noticed, but the one already popped off. They just, so that's a good sign when the fiberglass shell wants to just pop off. One more over here, one more bolt. Okay, let me turn this and show you what I'm looking at. So, you can see here the scene, there's always, this is the, this was upside down, this was the part that was at the bottom. So here at the scene, there was a little concrete that kind of drips, squirts out. So um, I'll end up knocking that off. You'll see if it doesn't fall off when I'm uh, taking the mold apart. So there we go, there's the third piece and then this final piece. And sometimes I like to work with it a pie. So I'll put it up on a paint can. Just gently pull this out, there we go. Okay, so you can see there's that concrete there that's come from the drip. And I'm just gonna flip this out. It just peels off real nice. I'm just gonna show you here the tail. So I know I've got my breakable parts here and the concrete is still, still fairly raw, so I wanna be real gentle. Okay, so far good there. I'm just loosening up some of these spots. Take a look how it wants to come apart. Okay, so here's the, the head. One of those spots I wanna be real careful because I know I got the comb and the beak. And those are a couple of my main concerns. Pull this back. All right, so there's the comb and the beak, and so far, so this is all the seam. So this will just chip off here. It's real thin, but I don't want it to break anything on the comb while that is still hardening. Perfect. If I pull this, it's just gonna possibly pull that last little chunk off. So, I'm trying to kind of massage this. Perfect. All right, so here's what we got. I got the chicken head, and this is my seam. And I like to take a small screwdriver on just any big chunks. Turn this around so you can see some of these seam marks. So on the back side I've got my seam that as this dries it's mostly invisible but you'll always see a little bit of that so that's where you want the fewest seams possible. Not bad actually, this is really good. Comb, the beak, everything. I think it's a perfect one here. And then the hard part or tricky part here is A little extra back where the seam was on the tail. All right, for the raccoon here, I'll take the shell off and then slowly peel the mold off. You can watch that, and then we'll kind of uh, clean up any seam lines or see how it looks. Shell is off. 
Now this is where I want to kind of see how my seam is. I want to be real careful so I don't break off any of those fragile parts. So I know I have the ears and I got the legs where my big parts of concern. Um, back part not so much. So I'm just going to start by opening this. And because there's a seam there should be a little extra crumbles that just kind of fall off. Just kind of start real gentle. I don't want to pull anything I don't have to. Sometimes I'll loosen around the base. Okay. Gentle around the nose so I don't pop the nose off. Good. So you can see right here, just the very, very tip of the ear crumbled off. It's the thin part, so I gotta have to remember to watch that. Now actually that's gonna be pretty invisible. So I think the statue will still be good. Okay. And knowing I got the back here that comes off real easy, I'll just filter this thing off. Come around to the leg and just see if it will gently glide out. There's the raccoon with its leg and everything. As you can see, my well, as you hopefully can't see, this is where the seam was at. And I did lose a little bit there when I was taking it off. I wasn't real careful. And again, it's really raw. I could just gently knock and probably take a leg or an ear off. And after about a week, that stuff is on there pretty well. This leg will always be something to be careful of. And I, I'll bet you in time, some kids playing around with it, whatever, this this will be a, one of the first things that breaks off just because it's um, where it's at. But that's all right. Okay, now for the squirrel. I'm going to just take my bolts out. Okay, so got my shell, and again, nothing's hooked on it, it just pops right off. This one pulls out the back. Here's my seam all the way up. I'm just gonna gently see what it wants to do. This is a smaller statue, so there's more breakable, thinner parts than some of those big chunks. Here ones. Great. Looks like the tail's gonna survive. Next up is the ears. Okay, two ears survived, feet survived. Let's take a look. All right, you can see here on the squirrel, uh, I've got my seam goes along through here. Overall, pretty invisible. As this thing dries, it's going to be gray. You're, you're going to hardly see anything there. Maybe a, a little crack you'll kind of see, but uh, that turned out actually really well for a, a concrete statue. Um, so there's that one. All right, so the molds are taken apart. I had a little bit of extra concrete, so I kicked out one of my old molds. I have a little tiny uh, bunny, and so I went ahead and got my bunny made up. But um, that's a success. Now you can see here in the video, these are very dark gray. So if you're not familiar with concrete, uh, kind of in that first day and even actually first couple, first week or so, it's gonna be like this and then it's gonna turn super light gray as it dries. Um, it really needs at least a week to kind of harden up and then uh, even painting wise, if you're gonna do any paint or stain or anything on there, you wanna give that a couple weeks to, to cure, get all the moisture out of there and kind of get set and then you can go from there. So. Well, the statues are done as far as uh, getting the concrete in there. They're now just drying. I was hoping to come back out here and let you see them in the yard when it was sunny and uh, show you kind of what I do, but it's been wet for a few days. I actually had time to make an extra chicken and squirrel and uh, get that done. So there's now a twin and uh, I'll be making more of those soon. Uh, but uh, anyway, if, you, uh, if you're making these statues, one of the things you want to do after you have the concrete statue kind of demolded is uh, set it outside. If it's really hot, I put it in the shade and I'll spray it off each day or so. Uh, if it's in the rain, that's fine. Uh, the moisture actually on top of it helps harden the outside surface and just lets it cure slowly. So that's good for it. And uh, these things will last forever. Um, the biggest issue of them not lasting is not so much the weather, the elements, it's the kid coming up and picking it up and being like, ha, ah, and then dropping it. Uh, but uh, they're durable, they'll stay in your garden. Uh, over time, that, that uh, really light gray that will come, that will begin to kind of uh, have this uh, 
kind of dirty, cool look, uh, whether it's kind of uh, some grime in some of the edges, growing some moss on it, that sort of thing. You can also paint and finish those. Um, I may have some videos down the road to show you how I antique them or kind of give them a, uh, a little different look. You can even paint them naturally. I've got a few things I've done with that and uh, it works. They, uh, just another look for the garden, but most people enjoy having just more of a natural concrete look. That's typically what I'm going for. And uh, it's fun, I'll have them all around the yard. Um, at some point I'll show you a video when it's sunny out of uh, different garden statues and what it does to kind of um, bring some accent or just some little highlights to different parts of the yard. But uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Again, thanks for enjoying Backyard Adventures with Andy. And uh, there'll be more soon. Let's get some sunshine though. All right, have a good life.